Hello, my name is Brett Formosa and welcome to a Unity tutorial video series for beginners. For this series, I'll go through each step with the mindset that all you've done is install Unity with no prior research or experience to make sure everyone can feel included and learn as we go. You can contact me either through the comment section down below, by visiting my personal website, or by leaving a message on my itch.io page. The links are in the description of this video. Last video, we made the player game object, as well as made that game object move with the W and the S keys. In this video, we are going to create the obstacles for the player to dodge while they play the game. Let's get started with part 3. We don't need the player game object at the moment, so let's deactivate it for now so we can focus solely on the asteroids by clicking the checkbox at the top left of the inspector. Now, let's create one of the asteroids and focus on getting that working, then we'll just duplicate the game object once it's finished. So, let's create a 2D square game object by your preferred method. It'll be similar to how you created the player capsule, but instead of clicking on capsule, it'll be square. For the asteroids, we will need three different components that will make the asteroids work the way we want them to work. We want the asteroid to move, so we will be using a similar method that we got the player character to move. So, with that knowledge, we will need a rigid body 2D and a C-sharp script, but we're also going to need a third component that I haven't gone over yet, which is a collider. Let's click Add Component and type Collider you will see a handful of collider options come up with around half of them having 2D at the end. If you don't see 2D at the end of the collider, it's for a 3D object. The 2D colliders are self-explanatory as those are just two-dimensional colliders. We want to pick a collider that fits the sprite as closely as possible, so we will be going with the box collider 2D. What a collider does is it is an invisible object, in this case an invisible square, that will be computing collisions using Unity's 2D physics capabilities. Colliders don't need to be the exact shape and size of the object as well. You can edit the collider by clicking the Edit Collider button. When you click this, you will see a green outline. This is the collider visualized. You can edit it by clicking on the side of the collider and moving it to the desired position. Let's focus on this box so we can more accurately move the collider in a position that we want it to be. If you press the F key on the keyboard, it will zoom into the selected object as close as it can to fill the scene viewed area. Let's move the collider in towards the center of the square. So if the edge of this object hits another asteroid, for example, they don't just stop in place or do anything that is undesired since the asteroids will move in close proximity of each other. Now, if we click the Edit Collider button again, we won't be able to move the collider by accident. Material, I won't be going into too much detail now as we won't be using it for this tutorial series. However, it is used to help you with creating more physics-based options for a game object so you don't have to manually code it, such as how much friction the object can have or how bouncy the game object can be. Is trigger is if you want the collider to trigger something through code. If another collider hits the trigger collider, then it will call the code that you want it to do once there is a collision. However, it won't work as a proper collider. Used by Effector, used by Composite, and Auto Tiling, we also won't be going over for this tutorial series, so let's not worry too much about them. Offset is if you want to offset the collider without having to manipulate its shape. Since we move the collider's shape, let's make sure that these are zeroed out so the collider is centered to the game object. We do this by putting a 0 in the X axis box and a 0 in the Y axis box. Edge radius is how thick you want the collider to be. We won't be needing it in this series, so let's leave this alone as well. The info drop down has a bunch of other information that can't be edited, so it's not worth going over at this time as well. But as always, if there's something that you want me to go over and explain in more detail, or explain something I haven't mentioned, let me know down below. With the collider created, let's create the rigid body 2D now by doing what we did with the player game objects by clicking on add component and selecting the rigid body 2D option. The only thing that we need to change on this is setting the gravity scale to zero and then click the freeze Z rotation boxes like we did with the player game object. 
Let's also quickly rename this game object from square to asteroid. And now let's create a C sharp script and call it asteroid manager. In the C sharp script, there are a few things we want to do that was similar to what we did with the player game object. We can also remove the start function as we will not need it in this script. However, if you want to customize this script later and need it, then feel free to keep it in or you can add it later when you do need it. Remember, we want the asteroid to move along the X axis or horizontally and not the Y axis or vertically, unlike the player that was moving along the Y axis and not the X. But other than that, everything else is mostly the same in terms of logic. First, we need to reference the rigid body in the awake function, so we need the reference at the top. In the player movement script, we wrote private rigid body 2D player RB. We can have the same effect if we leave out the private word as well. It will inherently assume that we want the reference to be private if we don't add either private or public in front of the reference. This doesn't work when we want the reference to be public, however, as we will always have to write public in front but private can still be either way. We will just write rigid body 2D asteroid RB. We now need to write the awake function. Similar to references, we don't need to write private in front of the void awake portion. The same functionality of private and public for the references also applies to functions in a C sharp script. Now, in the awake function, we will do what we did to grab the player rigid body by writing asteroid RB equals get component arrow brackets rigid body 2D parentheses. Now, to get the asteroid to move, we need a new function and a new reference. Again, following the same logic as the player movement script, we need to create a new public float speed reference at the top. We want to keep public references on top of private ones for simplicity and readability sake. Now we need to make a move function similar to how we made the player move function on the player movement script. We will write void move parentheses to make the function. Then inside we will write asteroid rb dot velocity equals new and then inside parentheses we will write speed comma zero. Then put the move function in the update function so it's called every frame so the asteroid will move. Let's save and then head back into Unity to see what we did. If you created the script through the project window, click on the asteroid game object so it's highlighted in the hierarchy and then drag and drop the script onto the object's inspector to add it. Since we will be playing with the script settings, let's make it easier for us to quickly be able to see the script variables instead of searching for them. So let's drag the script component to the top under transform by left clicking and dragging the component to the top until you see a blue line. Drop it on the blue line and it will reorganize itself to make it easier to view the component. Let's change the speed to 0.5 for now so we can make sure it moves without it going too fast off the screen. Then hit the play button and let's make sure it works. As you can see, it is slowly moving to the right of the screen. That is most of the movement script done. However, in Space Race, the asteroids move from left to right or from right to left. We don't need to make a new script for this. It is actually an easy solution to make everything easier. Let's go back into the Asteroid Manager script and make sure you click play button again to get out of the play mode. We want to create an enum so that we can set the direction for each asteroid and also set up a way that the asteroid knows what direction it is supposed to go automatically. Usually with enums, we put them above the class of the script. So let's put it above where it says public class Asteroid Manager but below the libraries like the using Unity Engine library. Here, we will write public enum direction. Make sure not to add parentheses after direction as it is not a function. However, we still need the curly brackets similar to a function or class. There are only two directions the asteroids can go, left or right. So that's all we have to write, left, comma, right. The comma is used to make a new constant in the enum. 
we need to add a reference now so the asteroid has a stored direction, which we will write public direction movement direction. Then we have to get the script to change direction based on that enum. A simple solution is by going down to the move function and write if, and then in parentheses, movement direction equals equals direction dot right. And then outside of it, you can add the curly brackets. And then we add the asteroid dot velocity line in the new curly brackets. I will explain everything more clearly once we are fully finished the rest of the function. We added what happens when the movement direction is right. So we just need to add what happens when the movement direction is left. So we will add else if, in parentheses, movement direction equals equals direction dot left, add the curly brackets again, then we will write asteroid rb dot velocity equals new, and then in parentheses, we will add the minus sign or the hyphen, speed, comma, zero. What we have written now is what's called an if statement. As usual, it reads from top to bottom and first says if the movement direction enum is set to right, then use this bit of code. However, if it is not right, it will move on to the next portion of code, ignoring what was inside. So, in this case, if the movement direction is set to left, then it will run this bit of code. The double equal sign means that the movement direction is equal to or is set to whatever is on the right side of the equal signs. In this case, direction dot left. There are other ways that we can write an if statement to check for different capabilities, such as if something does not equal to, if something is greater than or less than something else, if something is equal but less than, etc, etc. As always though, I can go over if statements in more detail in a later video if it is requested. This is one way to separate what you want your code to do based on specific situations. Let's save this and go back to the Unity editor. Now you can see in the inspector there's a new movement direction drop down with left or right inside of it. If we just hit play, it will move to the left of the screen. If we switch it to the right, it will move to the right of the screen. We have fully set up the movement function for the asteroid. However, this has been a rather information heavy video, so let's take a break here and continue with the asteroids in the next video. In the next video, we will cover what happens when the asteroids get to the edge of the screen. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.